Amen. This morning we get the passage from First Ruth. Ruth is the book about about Ruth. 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 Yeah, it's really hard to know that. Ruth is about the woman Ruth, who is a Moabite woman, right? And she never loses that name, that demarcator for who she is, right? Even when she returns with Naomi to Bethlehem, she remains a Moabite woman. That's how they refer to her, right? There's a lot of stuff going on in our lesson this morning that mimics a lot of stuff that's happening right now in our own world, right? The people left Bethlehem, which is, which is kind of ironic. Why did they leave Bethlehem? Famine. There was a famine. Does anyone know what the name Bethlehem means? House of bread. House of bread. There was a famine in the house of bread. And they had to leave. So they went to Moabite, to Moab. And Moab was a country that Israelites had issues with. They'd been there before. Um, and they were actually interrelated in some ways. Um, so it wasn't easy for them to go back to Moab. But they had to because there was no bread where they were living. So they picked up, took, and moved to another country. They were foreigners. Or the unkind word we hear a lot now is refugees. Because they didn't have what they needed. So they left where they were to seek what they needed. And they found it in a country that they probably weren't openly welcomed into when they first got there. But they were there how long? Probably longer, because it says that the, the husband died, and then the sons took wives, and then ten years after that, the, the sons died, right? So they were there uh, over ten years. They were there long enough for the sons of Elimelech and Naomi to find wives and to marry. And in all of that happening... They, they finally discovered that Bethlehem now had food available. So Naomi, after all of this happened to her, her wife, her husband died, and then her two sons passed away. She decides it's time to go back to Bethlehem. And she goes. And it says when she gets ready to leave that her daughters-in-law are going with her, right? In verse 6 it says, Naomi and her daughter-in-law get up because they hear that there's food now back in Bethlehem. So they're going to go and return to Naomi's home country. And then in verse 7, it says again that the daughter-in-laws went with Naomi, with, with Naomi because that's what they were going to do, because they were now part of Naomi's family. And when Naomi tells them that they shouldn't come, right, why does she say they shouldn't come? Because of Leverite marriage. Who knows about Leverite marriage? It's an interesting concept in the Old Testament that talks about how if, uh, if you marry, if you have brothers and you marry a wife and then you, you die, your brother has to marry your wife, right? The closest male relative in the family has to marry the now widowed woman. That's Leverite marriage. So when Naomi talks about to her two daughter-in-laws, right, to Orpah and to Ruth, about how, how am I going to give you sons to marry, right? Even if I married a husband tonight and had sons, would you still wait for, to marry them? That's what she means by that. But Orpah and Ruth are not Jewish, so they don't have to be held to that, do they? Here's the thing about Ruth that is really important for all of us to learn. What was Ruth to Naomi? daughter-in-law. That's a, that's a correct answer. What else was Ruth to name? A friend. A friend? That's a good answer. What else was Ruth to Naomi? And, and here's your clue. It's something that God wants you to be to God. That's, that's an okay answer. Because she didn't really, I mean, she did probably help to take care of. Ruth was going to be there to take care of Naomi regardless of what happened. right? She didn't have to go back to Jerusalem, to, to, to Bethlehem with Naomi. But she was going to take care of her because she was in a relationship with Naomi. And she had grown to love and to become family with Naomi. So she was 
she was going to be there for her to help take care of her. So servant could be a good answer. And God does want you to be a servant of God. But more than that, what does God want you to be to him? You are his child. You don't have a choice in that. You do have a choice in what Ruth was to Naomi. Not a friend. Mm -hmm. Being close. Y'all have the right first what? letter here. Friend, follower. So. Faithful. Ruth was faithful to Naomi. God wants you to be faithful to God. See, sometimes in our lives, things are set up so that we don't necessarily want to do what we have to do. Right? Sometimes things happen in our lives and God makes things change or God places Things, thing, or things just happen. Sometimes it's not God that does it, but things just happen in our lives. And we have choices that we have to make. Right? Orba and Ruth both had the decision because Naomi said to them, Do not come with me. Do not return to your mother's house. Right? Not your father's house. Return to your mother's house. Because you will be accepted there. See, Naomi knew that if these Moabite women came with her to Bethlehem, that they may not be accepted. She was worried for their security. She was worried for their safety. She was worried about what would happen. But Ruth was more caught up in the fact that God had already taken them and joined them together. And there was no way that anything was going to take that apart. Ruth was faithful to Naomi. In and through everything that happened. Because that's what God told her she should be. And we all have a choice to follow where God is leading us or to take our own path. And what are we going to do? Because God is always going to be faithful and you're always going to be his child, whether you want to be or not. Because God loves you and sent Jesus to come and die for you. But now he's asking each and every one of us to follow after him and to be faithful what he's leading us and calling us to. And that's the choice. Shadow. So what are we going to do? Are we going to be like Orpa and take the safe, the safe track and return to our to what we do? Or are we going to be like Ruth and cling to Naomi and follow where God is leading us, knowing that God is always going to have us in His hand, knowing that God is always going to take care of us, and knowing that we may not be able to control what's going to happen there. But no matter what, God is never going to leave us or forsake us. So who are you going to be? Ruth or Orba? The choice is yours. Whichever one God is loving you less. But you have to make a choice. Ruth or Orba.